Today is Vesaka Puja. We commemorate three events in one. The tradition has it that the Buddha was born on a full moon day in May. And then 35 years later, he gained his awakening on a full moon day in May. And then 45 years after that, he entered total nibbana on a full moon day in May. So here we are on a full moon day in May. So we commemorate these events. We think about what they mean in our lives. There are some events that happen and then just disappear into history. They're hard to find. Other events are known, and then there are other events that change people's lives. And the fact of the Buddha's awakening is one of those. It's a challenge. He said that it is possible through human effort to put an end to suffering, to find a deathless element inside the mind, or you can touch it with the mind. And that possibility opens up all kinds of possibilities. It makes us look at the rest of our lives with, an, with new eyes. The things that we take for happiness, are they really happy? The things with which we content ourselves, are they really worthy of contentment? He says there's something better. Of course, he had to fight all kinds of difficult battles in order to get there. Many of them because he didn't have a teacher, didn't have anyone to show him the way. He had to find it on his own, through trial and error. And we have the advantage, we have his teachings, we have the word of not only the Buddha himself, but also of his noble disciples, that yes, the Buddha really did find something. And he did it by developing qualities in the mind that we all have, in potential form. The implication being, he could do it, they could do it, why can't we do it? So it's good to mark these events, to remind ourselves that these are the events that really are landmark events in our lives, that we orient our lives around these events and the implications that they have. That we, it puts everything into perspective. And that's the Buddha's awakening. Then his passing away was the guarantee. He passed away and did not get reborn. He was totally unbound, not confined in any way by any way you could define him. Because we define ourselves by our attachments, but he had no attachments at all. So there was no way you could define him, no way you could describe him. His freedom was that total. So here again, a landmark event. So as we meditate today, think about what these events mean in our lives. And then ask ourselves, are we rising to the challenge, or are we just muddling through? You muddle through and you just keep on muddling. But if you rise to the challenge, it changes things inside. Your ideas of what's happiness will change. Your ideas of what's possible will change. Your ideas of what you're capable of doing will change. But you have to carry it through. This is what's meant by having conviction in the Buddha's awakening. We're convinced in him as a person. We're convinced in what he had to say about what he had found. And then we act on it. That's the real test of conviction, is when you act on it. So take that assumption as your working hypothesis, as you go through life, that it is possible to find true happiness. And you don't want to content yourself with anything less. You work on the skills that are needed, the happiness that can be found along the path. Use that as your food along the path. But as the Buddha said, the secret to his awakening was one, relentless effort, and two, not resting content, even with skillful qualities. So know how to develop the skillful qualities, how to use them, and how to go beyond them. That's when you can say that you fully benefit from the fact that the Buddha did find this path. He cleared away the weeds, cleared away all the obstacles. The path is still wide open. Take advantage of that fact while you can, because weeds do have a tendency to grow back. 
and some people are actually placing obstacles in the path. So as long as the path is open, follow it as far as you can.